Hey everyone, it's Ben Hardy here, and in today's gonna to be reviewing the all-new Enios Grenadier. Now, this particular one is a field master. Before we get into the video, I do want to talk about a couple of things. So, first off, a huge shout out and thank you to the Warner Enios Grenadier for giving me some time with this grenadier. I'll include a link to their website in the description down below so you can check what they have currently. If you have any questions or need any help at all, just ask for Corey. And then in terms of the stuff, so let me know what packages you want me to review on the new Enios Grenadier. They've got plenty of inventory here for me to pick from. And then let me know what comparisons you guys want to see on the Enios Grenadier. Do you want to see Grenadier versus Bronco, Wrangler, whatever it might be? Let me know in the comments section below. With that being said, let's get into it. Powering this is a turbocharged three liter inline six that goes through an eight speed automatic transmission. Power outputs are 282 horsepower and then 332 pound feet of torque. It's rated for 15 around town and then 15 on the highway. A couple things. So first off, this powertrain has been shown to be extremely reliable and also very tunable. People get crazy amounts of power out of this BMW powertrain. And then when it comes to fuel economy, real world, people have been saying they've been getting closer to the high teens with this. Obviously I can't attest to that because I don't own one of these, but that's what I've been seeing. Now, before we move forward with this review, I do want to mention, if you want to see more videos just like this, then I recommend you subscribe because I post content every single day. So starting with the hood, I love this color. It's kind of like a purple maroon in a way. It's just a really cool looking color. So you've got little Enios emblem and you can see Grenadier here on the side. And then it says Grenadier Fieldmaster right there. I think that's really cool. And then I love this just like on the Defender. And then look at the headlight design, very retro looking. Same thing with the center lights here as well. And then you guys can see here with the bumper, not only is it functional as in it could take a hit off road, it just looks really cool. And you can see how everything's been sculpted for approach angle at the front end. We also have recovery points as well. So putting it all together, it has that really cool retro modern look. Now around the side here, our time wheel setup is 255, 70, 18 in the front and over in the rear. And you can see with the wheels, you've got kind of like a beadlock style. It looks really cool, actually. And then of course, all-terrain tires. Now, big thing with the Grenadier, it's gonna be kind of hard to see here from the front, so I'll kind of dip down below. It does have a solid front axle, which is gonna help out with off-road articulation. See the suspension there a little bit. And then I love what they've done here with the fender flare, how it's very in line with the bumper. But you can see with the fender flares there, they got a little American flag on the side. Rock reel protection and I love these door handles really cool very similar to the G-Wagon and then we have a solid rear axle as well again you're not really gonna be able to see it too well from this angle but speaking of angles look at the side profile of this it's so cool looking another cool stuff I really like the handles here up top I think that's another nice feature and while this leads us to the key fob, it's actually a really cool key fob. So it does have a flip out key, but it has a very like satisfying actuation to putting it back in. And you have to, you have to play with it yourself to kind of understand, but yeah, it's all you need and nothing that you don't. Now popping to the cargo area, you can see we've got another one of those cool handles and then we have a ladder on the back as well. And opening it up, uh, pretty simple with that. And you actually have a latch there inside. Uh, now this is just if you want to quickly throw things in, but if you want to get in fully, you have another latch right there and that'll let you open up the other part of the swing gate. Uh, and I mean, it opens up pretty dang wide, but you can see tons of cargo space here in the back. So if you're wondering in terms of size, this is actually pretty close in size to like a Toyota 4Runner 200 series Land Cruiser. Uh, it's, it's very spacious in terms of like the length. I'd say width wise, it's more like a Land Cruiser. It's, it's big. Uh, so plenty of space here in the back. And I like this, easy to clean. They're always thinking about practicality with this. You can definitely tell. And then closing this, even with the spare on it, it's very easy and very satisfying to close. And you can actually use the ladder to close it too. Got the spare tire on the back. And with how they've set this up, I wonder if you could do even, maybe even a bigger spare tire. It actually might get in the way of this a little bit. I'm just kind of, I'm kind of thinking from an aftermarket perspective. But yeah, really cool taillight design. You can see more recovery points. Notice they've tucked the exhaust tips back there, so that helps out departure. But putting it all together, let me know you guys think about the looks of the new Grenadier. Now popping inside, really nice fit and finish. Like this is really well built, very tight, nice material use as well. And I like the handle there with the look and everything. 
And then you can see with these seats, Recaro seats, uh, but really nice trim. You got the stitching that goes there. Now you do have to hop up a little bit, but they do give you this little step to help out with getting in. Um, but leg room back here is actually really good. We've got some vents here in the back, got some USB ports as well. And then because the boxy design, plenty of headroom. And this actually has stadium seating. So the back passengers can see the front really well. Now take a look at the front door panel again. You can see really tight fit and finish and it's soft touch in all the important places. We've got all of our window controls here, your mirror adjustments. There's a quick look at the mirrors themselves. Got that kind of like boxy design. And then this is impressive with the Ineos Grenadier. So we've got 1,484 pounds of payload capacity. And then we've got Recaro seats up front. Again, really nice stitching. I love the bolstering on it too. Uh, the seats are manually adjustable. And then this pedal, this pedal looks like super chunky for the brake pedal, uh, but soft touch again on the dash. And yes, that flip out key is for the ignition that you put the key into. It starts up in the center here and also there. <laughs> now take a look at the steering wheel. I actually really like this design. I'm usually not a fan of two spoke, uh, but they've done a few things really well. So first off, of course got Grenadier there. I like how it's perforated on the center portion. That's great for thumb grips if you're off-roading and then with how they've made this width wise it just looks really good now of course i got to do the horn thing because everyone does it when they review one of these so you got the regular horn which is regular horn and then you got the little toot i wish i wish that was actually the sound of most uh, car horns that would be nice uh, but yeah functional you got cruise control of that you got your regular stocks here in the back so the light stock for example windshield wiper stock and then in reverse, we've got a backup camera with trajectory lines that turn with the steering wheel and solid resolution with that. Uh, looks like it, resolution reminds me of a BMW camera, so I wonder if they took the unit from that. Um, but anyways, this infotainment system was actually uh, made by Ineos. Uh, you can see it does take a second for some of the pages to load up, uh, but overall it's again super easy to use and everything just makes sense. So if you wanna see the altitude, for example, we can see the altitude home screen like it's just it's so straightforward i wish more infotainment systems were like this where it was it was just so user friendly and you will notice that this is the information you'll need for driving so it shows us you know odometer it shows us fuel range for example and how fast you're going so all the normal stuff now the next thing that i really like is this compass so it shows us the altitude and the temperature outside and again just really well done with the design now down below for those of you that are physical button lovers like myself, tons of physical buttons. So for the heated seats, for example, and I like the actuation on the button. It's very satisfying to click with all of this stuff. I like that right there. That's such a retro throwback, but yeah, tons of controls. So climate, you know, for like the defroster stuff, your AC, auto stops, right? If you want to turn that off, all of that is in that area. Give you a traditional parking brake here. So that's another nice feature. And then you can see we've got the shifter for the eight speed. And then we've got our four wheel drive select. So it's four wheel drive all the time. Uh, you do have a center locking differential and then you've got your uh, four wheel low as well. And then this is actually a control here for the center screen. Uh, so basically just shortcut buttons for everything. Again, they double down with physical controls on everything in this it looks like. Got some cup holders and then look at the center console. Reminds me of the uh, Wrangler center console a little bit, but this, is kind of, uh, dare I say, better built. <laughs> Might offend some people. It doesn't have the same like shaky rattle thing that you get in the Wrangler center console. I'm saying that as someone who owns one. Now I kind of mentioned it earlier, but again, you've got soft touch across the dash and you have really sturdy grab handle. And same thing, well, there's not one over here, but there is one over here. Same thing with the side grab handles. They're very sturdy feeling. And then with the glove box, I like the, again, the actuation on items within this. It just, it feels very well built. Now, a really fun feature is this one has these Safari windows, so you can just kind of pop it open like that, uh, or you can fully take it out if you want. I'm not gonna open it up all the way because it's raining right now, but yeah, that's such a, again, a throwback. Now up top, we've got a bunch of physical controls and I like the switch here for the power. It's just so satisfying uh, with the click. It says Grenadier, obviously, uh, but front rear locking differentials with this, that's a big thing. You've got your off-road mode that you can select up there. And then you can see with the trash control to turn that off as well. Uh, but yeah, more controls up top. And I thought, you know, this might be a little bit weird to have these controls up here, but with how the seat is positioned, it's actually really easy to see these controls and to use them. 
And so this leads us to the window sticker. Uh, so the Grenadier window sticker is very interesting because it basically shows you the standard equipment and then it doesn't really lay out the options on the window sticker. Very, very interesting. Um, but anyways, uh, total MSRP after everything on this particular one is $88,390. And let's see how it drives. Well, let's talk about visibility before we set off. Here's visibility over the hood, both of the mirrors. Throughout the rest of the rear. Really good visibility because of that boxy design. Just like a Wrangler and a Bronco. But it feels more open than those. I think a big part of it is the Safari windows on this particular one. So sorry, I'm gonna have to do a defroster a little bit. Or actually, let's do the rear. That should be adequate to keep that up. Now, first thing to note, the steering is very interesting in the Grenadier. <laughs> Those windshield wipers make such an interesting sweep noise. Um, but it's definitely solid axle steering. You can you can feel that. Uh, so with that, a good way to describe it is it's. I, I I've heard some people say it's it's slow to respond. I don't know if that's the best way to put it. I think that it's more so that they give you more, there's more steering that can happen. So you can be more precise with the steering, which makes sense for off-roading. Now, right off the bat, let's turn that down a little bit more. There we go. This powertrain, although a BMW powertrain feels very different than what you have in BMWs. It's way, like way torquier feeling. It's a very interesting feel, to say the least. Yeah, I don't know what people are talking about the steering. The steering's fine. Again, it's it's a solid front axle vehicle, so the steering will kind of... But that that's literally what these vehicles have done since the beginning of time, the, this, with solid front axles. This is really comfortable. Now, I don't know what the uh, tire pressure is at. Didn't look at that, but still really comfortable ride I drove my I drove my Land Cruiser here today which you know the, I think the 200 series Land Cruiser is one of the most comfortable vehicles out there and this is right there with it and the damping's the damping's very nice when you go over bumps unlike my Land Cruiser it doesn't do the floatiness <laughs> over the bumps it's way more controlled you can see how far suspension has come since they since they made the uh, 200 series Land Cruiser but yeah it's it's just it's so smooth that's the biggest thing and the powertrain is gr like this this inline six it feels more like a diesel than it does like a gas engine with how it delivers the torque. It, it's, it's a really cool driving experience, actually. I like it a lot. Now, something I do to mention, sorry if the GoPro view is not perfect. The seat's like super upright uh, with the adjustment on it. So the GoPro's, see if I tilt it down a little bit more. That'll give you guys a better view with it. Yeah, so far I'm super impressed with this. Oh, or we'll have a chance to get some of an acceleration here. I'm trying to take that turn super slow so I can give you guys... Wow! <laughs> it's... It's actually... It's actually quick. Uh, I think this vehicle weighs something like almost... It's, it's like 50... I might be... Don't quote me on this, but I think it's like 5,800 pounds. But it's not bad at all. Like, it's... It's got more than enough power more than enough power to get up and go. Now when you do, you know, when you are like hard on the throttle, you again, the steering solid axle, just like in a Wrangler, just like in a Wrangler. Um, so then I can be setting things up. Again, this is just an initial review here on the Ineos Grenadier, kind of like a, you know, first impression as they say. And my first impression is extremely 
positive. So usually I don't look at any reviews before I review a car myself because I don't want my opinions to be that of someone else's. I want my own opinions. With this particular car, I was bored on YouTube, so like I watched some TFL. <laughs> Couldn't help myself. TFL is a guilty pleasure of mine. With that being said, they said some things that they, you know, liked about the car and they didn't like about the car. And I agree with the things that they like about the car. I don't agree with the things they said they don't like about the car for the most part. So like the steering was one thing, for example, and it's just solid axle steering. And it's, it's not like if you have both your hands on the steering wheel, like you should when you're driving, it's not a problem at all. It's, it feels, it, and it's something you instant, like I got in this car and instantly I was used to the steering. It, it, there's no learning curve to it uh, whatsoever. But uh, yeah, I mean, it's just, it's, it's seriously an impressive vehicle. Uh, I think that this is what a lot of people are wanting in a modern Bronco and in a modern Wrangler, and neither of those companies really offer this. And, and here's what I mean. This vehicle, unlike a Bronco and a Wrangler, right, you can't take half of it apart, but that means that you get better interior insulation, so it's more daily drivable. It has, you know, the Wrangler and the Bronco have retro styling, but this has like, retro styling on a whole nother level it looks so it looks like an old defender it's so cool looking and then the interior fit and finish and i'm saying this as somebody who owns a wrangler is so much better than a bronco on a wrangler like super tight feels well built sturdy and that's something that as someone who is an off-road enthusiast i really want because with off-road vehicles you buy them for the capability and this is you know it's got over 10 inches of ground clearance it's capable but you also, you know, you buy for like the tank-like experience and this actually provides that. The Wrangler and the Bronco, I mean the clothes, like a Wrangler 392, that kind of feels more like a tank because it's, it's heavier, but this has a tank-like feel because of how well built it is. And it's impressive because Ineos is a new company, so you wouldn't expect the build quality to be as good as it is. Uh, you know, it's like you, you could forgive them if the build quality wasn't that good, but it, it's amazing. And so I think that a lot of people that are buying Broncos and Wranglers and even the new Defender, what they really want is something like this. And it exists now. Like this is a car that you can now go to a dealership and buy. So let me know what all of you think about the new Ineos Grenadier. But I think they did a fantastic job with this. Uh, I was, the, the biggest thing I was honestly concerned about before this review that I'll just clap things off with, I was a little bit concerned about the powertrain. I was worried about a gas powertrain in a vehicle like this because I just feel like diesel fits the character more. But with how they've tuned this engine with the torque curve and everything, it is as close as you can get to a diesel without being a diesel, which means that you get that experience without the extra cost of fuel diesel is usually more expensive than gas and the extra maintenance associated with diesel as well so let me know what you think about the toot mobile